So some of us are struggling a bit with solutions, and so I want to offer a little bit of help here. First thing that we need to do is to read carefully this uh, molecular views of solutions. Now, some of you had a chance to see me put hydrochloric acid on my hand, and not much happened, despite the fact that it was concentrated. Now, there are concentrated acids, sulfuric acid and nitric acid, that I would never pour on my hand. But my body has evolved to protect itself from hydrochloric acid. In fact, I produce hydrochloric acid in my stomach to aid digestion. But a single drop of the solution that your body produces in your stomach is enough to destroy hunks of metal and do other damage to things other than your skin, especially your eyes. So acids, depending upon their concentration, can in fact be quite dangerous. So how can we use molarity? Now, this is a word that we're going to encounter frequently. We need to understand that capital M is used to indicate molarity. Molarity. But it is a ratio. It is moles divided by volume. Because we're chemists, we're interested in how many moles of a substance we have to react or to create in a chemical reaction. And moles are what our balanced equations tell us about. So how can we use molarity to determine the number of moles of a solute? A solute is the stuff that's dissolved in a solution. It represents the minor component of a solution. Those of you who had the opportunity to mess around with peppers, capsaicin is an example of a solute that behaves very much like a toxin. A toxin is a poisonous substance produced by an organism. And plants produce capsaicin as a toxin to fight off rats and other potential harmful organisms. Mold are also killed by the toxin called capsaicin. We are not harmed by capsaicin, but the burn of capsaicin in your mouth can be uncomfortable. And since capsaicin is used in pepper spray, it can be very irritating. But our author is interested in a toxin. So again, I'm hoping that you're reading this either before or after you come to this little video, but you need to read carefully. So the amount of toxin you're exposed to or the amount of capsaicin that's present in a solution, its effect is going to be determined on the concentration and the amount that you actually take in. So we're going to explore the relationship between solution concentration, solution volume, and eventually the number of moles of solute in a given solution. Okay, so now we're gonna talk here about the same volume at different concentrations. Our author now shifts to a red dye and dots are going to be proportionate to the number of molecules of red dye that are present. Each dot is representing a molecule or is proportionate to the number of molecules is a better way to say that. And so we're going to look at the molecular views of four solutions. If I have a two molar solution, that means that there are two moles of red dye for every liter of solution. This is half as concentrated. This is one quarter the concentration of the original substance and this is one eighth of the concentration that I had originally. Now the concentration numbers are gonna disappear as I scroll up. So my two molar solution behaves in the same way that 120 dye molecules in this little square would behave. This square is the same size. It only has 60, 30 or 15. And again, those are proportionate to the concentrations that are listed above. So, this represents one eighth of the concentration of the two molar. This number 15 is one eighth of this number 120. The particles per unit volume now are being represented as particles per square that we've cut out of that solution. 
we've tabbed the concentration and have the number of dye molecules when we went from one solution to the next. And that is what is illustrated by the dots. When there are more dye molecules per unit volume, the red color of that solution will become more intense. Now we're going to look at the same concentration, but this time different volumes. And this is something that I did as a demonstration using a substance called Congo Red, which we will see next week. Particle solutions of two solutions. These have the same concentration. However, this is one liter and this is 250 milliliters. It turns out that 250 is one quarter of a thousand milliliters, and that thousand is equivalent to one liter. So if I have a two molar solution, but I have a whole liter of that, then I would count out 120 dye molecules in the original squares that we were looking at up here. But now we want one quarter of the volume. So in that one quarter of a volume, I have a smaller square then, and I would only have 30 dye molecules in one quarter of the solution that held 120 dye molecules in an entire liter. Same concentration, but different volume allows me to use a different number of moles. It is a good idea to always remember that this capital M is molarity, and it represents a ratio moles over liters of solution. Capital M is a ratio and not a measure directly of the number of particles or for that matter, the volume of the solution. It's the ratio between those two things. Ratios are always complicated. So we don't want to just look at M and think moles. Nope, we wanna think moles per liter when we see capital M. Again, you're reading this either before or after you viewed this video. So now we're going to take a look at four solutions. Uh oh, we have different volumes and different concentrations. So before we do anything, let's understand what's different and similar between solutions A and B. Solutions A and B have the same concentration the same ratio of moles per liter. So for these two solutions, we're going to write six moles, one liter of solution. And A and B have that feature in common. However, we see that there is less of one than the other. And it is good to know that 100 is one tenth of 1000. This is equivalent to one liter. And this is equivalent to one tenth of a liter. Same concentration, but a different volume involved there. Let's look at the next two solutions and see what we can find in common between them. Oh, once again, similar concentrations. I shouldn't say similar, I should say identical concentrations. And at the same time, we have different volumes. But we'll put in our two moles one liter, remind ourselves that that is the ratio constant between these two. And a little bit further, this represents one tenth of a liter, and this represents two tenths of a liter. Now we're going to be asked what's actually present in solution A, B, C, and D in terms of the number of moles that are present. What we will do is multiply the concentration times the volume. And that comes as we scroll down a bit further. 
Now, our author says, hey, concentration is just a proportionality constant relating moles and volume. But I like to think of concentration with that capital M as a number representing the number of moles per liter of solution. So all of these numbers were followed by the letter capital M when we first were introduced to these four solutions. I've simply converted capital M into the units that are hidden within capital M. Now you can see that we're multiplying for solution A, an entire liter times the moles per liter to give us six moles. Remember we said this is one tenth of a liter. 0.1 is a representation of one tenth. And so we have fewer moles than we had in solution A. They have the same concentration, but a smaller volume contains fewer moles. Yet the ratio between moles and liters is the same. D and C are now in a different order. Why? Because we were asked to rank them from the greatest number of moles to the fewest number of moles. And we had to multiply in order to get each of those values. Concentration times volume gives me moles. You can see that even though the volume of B is less than the volume of D, see those two volumes are different, I still have more moles in B than I had in D because the concentrations are different. This is more than twice the concentration of solution D. So even though this volume is twice as great, I still have more moles in the higher concentration despite the smaller volume. Solution B is more concentrated than solution D. So as we talked with Peppers, Habanero has a much more concentrated solution of capsaicin in it than the other peppers that we looked at. Although we actually found Serrano to be hotter, so therefore more concentrated even than Habanero. But the big idea here is that the concentration of a solution does not change depending upon how much of that solution you actually measure out in some way. So here is an important example that we will work out together. I have 50 milliliters of a two moles per liter solution of toxin. But I have over here a different solution and a different amount. Now, the cartoons that you see on either side would indicate, hey, if you have a higher concentration than per unit of volume represented by this square, you're gonna pack in more of that toxin. I need to make a little change there. Higher concentration, more toxin per unit volume. Lower concentration, fewer toxin molecules per unit volume. However, the two volumes aren't the same. So now we are gonna to have to carefully calculate a few things here. Which one contains more toxin, larger dose, more toxin, not more concentrated. That would be the two molar. Okay, that's fine. But this is just how much toxin are you gonna be consuming were you to ingest either of these? Okay, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I start with two, and then I write moles over liters. Moles over liters. Because that is what the two represents. But I have to multiply. I'm going to be multiplying my moles per liter times 50 milliliters. But you know, I'd like to put that over the number one to remind myself that that is in fact a quantity 
that I have to manipulate. Unfortunately, Zoom doesn't allow me to do a good job here because what I'd like to do, oh, I think I can now, is to put lines in here to represent the fact that I'm talking about a ratio. In a sense, I'm also talking about a ratio here, but that's simply the volume that I'm working with. The last thing that I need to do is also important, and that is to convert liters from milliliters. But there is one liter for every thousand milliliters. So I'm multiplying three numbers together, two times 50. But then, although I am multiplying by that number one, I'm dividing by the number 1,000. We are going to repeat that entire calculation, but now for a solution, which is more dilute. And yet the units are the same. So, as I've written before, moles, liters, and that that is going to fit right nicely in to here. So that is part of that number. It's the ratio. How many moles per liter of solution? We are multiplying again, but this time it is not 50. We are multiplying times 175. And I'm again putting that over the number one to remind us of where that number actually fits into our calculator and our calculations. And the last thing is exactly what I did before because it doesn't matter what you're talking about, liters and milliliters are always units of volume related by the number 1000. Okay, so now we're asking the question, which of these results will give me the larger number? Well, we need to pull out a calculator, but this number is going to be the equivalent of two times 50, which is 100 times one, which remains 100 divided by 1,000, so 0.1. This is going to be some 80.25, uh Oh, but then I divide by 100, so I'm gonna have to move that decimal point over two places. We'll see what we get, but you need to show work. And this is exactly the work required to convert a concentration and a volume into a number of moles. And it's important that I emphasize that. Here I should get 0.1 of a mole, and here I should get 0.1. 0825 of a mole. Let's see how we do. Okay. We multiplied two moles per liter by 0.05 liters. We converted our milliliters into liters before we did this multiplication. Fine. And we did the same here. So we have a greater number of toxin molecules in our higher concentration, despite the fact that we had a larger volume, but a more dilute solution. Um, this is an aside that I do want you to read. Fructose is found in fruits and vegetables. However, there's only one organ in your body that can process fructose. And it's the same organ that deals with any poison that comes into your body and it's called the liver. Your brain, and the rest of the cells of your body require glucose to function, but fructose can't supply energy to your brain or muscles. Glucose is the only substance that can do that. So the reason why fruit is healthy for you is because in addition to the fructose, which we think is bad for you, fruits and vegetables contain a lot of fiber. That slows down and therefore dilutes the concentration of fructose that your body actually absorbs. And so the more you dilute something, the more your body has an opportunity to deal with that 
without serious consequences. Just like when we diluted capsaicin, it made it difficult to taste, your body doesn't have to deal with it. But if it is highly concentrated, then that capsaicin can lead to a burning sensation in your mouth. And we had to do something to deal with that. Okay, there's another way of representing concentration, but we're gonna go right past that. So how do you use molarity to determine the number of moles of a solute? Multiplication. You must take the ratio called molarity and multiply times liters. So how can we, how can two solutions with different volumes have the same concentration? Well, that's possible because concentration is a ratio. For example, two moles in two liters is the same concentration as one tenth of a mole in one tenth of a liter. By the way, both of these would be considered one molar solutions. It doesn't matter how many moles and it does not matter how many liters. What is key is the ratio. How can you figure out how many moles of a solute you have in a specific concentration? Well, molarity is the ratio. It is an expression for concentration. But those units are moles over liters. And so what we have to do every time is to multiply volume as long as it's in liters, we will be just fine. <clears throat> How can you figure out how many moles of solute you have in a solution with a specific concentration? Molarity is the expression of concentration. So you must multiply times the number of liters. Works every time. Now it's your turn. You're going to be asked to draw similar to what was done in the very first page of this, how to do, oh, but this time it's blue dye that we're gonna be working with. And I would expect you to make some squares like this. They all have to be of equal size. And it's the number of particles that you're putting in, which are going to be proportionate to the concentration. But again, they want you to use their view of these solutions. So I'm gonna scroll back and take a look at that first page in just a minute. But you're gonna have a box for 0.5, a box for 0.25, and a box for 0.1, okay? So we go back and we look. This is how they did the red dye. They said, hey, 60 dye molecules, one molar. My square's a little bit smaller, but let's go with the same proportions that they did. Two molar, hey, that's gonna be 120 dye molecules. Half molar, that's gonna be 30 dye molecules. 0.25 molar, oh, that's gonna be 15 dye molecules. So, 
we better have 30 dye molecules in our first one, but you are going to be making 30 dots. So how many for this one? Well, half of 30, that would be 15. Half of 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. So now I know that I need 15 dots. And how about for the last one? Well, it's kind of hard to divide this by two and a half to get point. Oh, wait a minute. Here's 0.5 and there's one. Well, that's a ratio of five. So one fifth of 30, hmm. Whatever one fifth of 30 is, I think that's what I have to put here. 30 divided by five. That's what I'm gonna be putting there, number of dots. Make sure you indicate the number of dots in addition to making those dots so that I know what it is that I'm grading. Now you're going to be multiplying and comparing. So for question number four, we want to have the same number of moles of the two solutions, but we have different concentrations. Now, this is what threw me off when I first read it. What portion of this? No, no, no. Let's ignore that number for just a moment. Here we have one liter times 0.25 moles per liter of blue dye solution. So of the blue dye solution, this is going to give me, let me get all the way over there. There we go. This is going to give me um, 0 0.25 moles, which from what we did above, I believe that's going to be 15, the equivalent of 15 dots. Okay. But now the question is how much, what volume? of 0 0.5 molar mm, contains 0 0.25 moles of blue dye. So again, that one liter is kind of a distractor. However, we need to figure out what times 0.5 this 0.5 will equal this 0.25. What will I multiply 0.5 by to get 0.25? That corresponds to the volume. How many liters of this solution will give me that many moles? That's the question that we're trying to answer. Okay, I want you now to start working on your own. I am especially interested in questions 10, which I think I've made a mistake here, but that's okay. Ba, 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 question 10, where we're tabulating what's going on there. And then question 11, we're making sketches of three more boxes corresponding to solutions two, three, and four, because we're being told that this box is representing solution number one. If this box represents solution number one, how many dots will you be representing for solutions two, three, and four? And yes, at least two of the boxes will be identical to themselves. Two boxes will be equivalent. Have fun, It'll, you'll do great. And we will be talking about this on Tuesday, although we did cover it on Friday, if you missed Friday. Make sure you've got this done as you walk in the door.